welcome to the Board of Education's board meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Sorry. I move Might to go into closed that. session to discuss collective bargaining, personnel, our HR report, administrative functions, minutes from July 11th, and to consult with council. Pursuant to the general provision Article 3-305, 3-104, I move we go into closed session. Oh, sorry, I already repeated that. <laughs> so, um, we just need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will reconvene at 6 p.m. See you then. Thank you. Welcome back uh, to the August 8th Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for county citizens to review on QAC TV 7, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table over here. During this week meeting, we will ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations and comments outside the meeting room. We will now stand and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'll move to approve the agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Then we're going to move to the approval of the minutes for the July uh, 11th meeting. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from July 11th? Open and closed. Open and closed. So moved. <coughs> Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. At this time, we'll move to uh, community involvement. And Dr. Kane, would you like to uh, share your events that you attended this month? Um, absolutely. So, of course, as far as events go, uh, not much in terms of events as our students and our, our teachers are out. But moving forward, we're happy to welcome our students back in September. We're welcoming our teachers back um, the last week in August. We've got lots of professional development planned for them. They're going to have some safety training um, as well as some content area curricular training. So we're excited about that. And on next week, we will have our Leadership Institute and we'll have our administrators there they'll also get some safety training and lots and lots of other professional development that will help us to move our student performance and our teacher performance forward for the upcoming school year okay did you have anything that you wanted to that was so okay and um mr Kaluski. Thank you, President DiMaggio. Uh, similar to uh, Dr. Kane, the, other th the only one thing I would like to add is that uh, Mr. Tully and I ha had a great conversation with re representatives from Dixon Valve. Uh, we're continuing to look at internships and partnerships. Last year, if you recall, we, ha we sent 10 students from Ken Island High School and 10 students from Queen Anne's County High School to a leadership academy put on by Dixon Val. This year we're going to expand that to add 20 students from Queen Anne's and 20 students from Ken Island. So one will happen in the fall and the other one will happen in the spring. So a, a great partnership with Dixon Val and, and our students are going to benefit from it. Can, can I take my no back and change to a yes? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I, I really do want to recognize Chesapeake Bay Beach Club who hosted our executive team for our retreat that we had there for two days. They were just as gracious to us and, and um, afforded us the opportunity to use their, um, their boardroom and another one of their suites so that we could hold our uh, planning sessions for two days there uh, free of charge. They are fabulous and they just really are great partners. We're looking forward to continuing our relationship with them. Recall that they, we have the teacher of the year um, gala there and uh, it's a wonderful facility and we are grateful for our partners there thank you is that it that is it this okay. time okay all right at this time community participation mrs harlow will you read the rules for the community participation please certainly we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines speakers should sign the roster including their telephone number and address please speak your name and address when you come to the microphone Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Anything th longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. We have given organizations and municipalities and elected officials the opportunity to speak for five minutes. Individuals will still receive three minutes. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item. 
uh, an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future or a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not the proper venue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or processed through available channels. Uh, citizen participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, uh, the board will make sure that you have an appropriate staff member respond to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask that you, to, uh, as a courtesy to this board the, and our citizens, that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering your critique. And the first person signed up is Mr. Bob Sibbins. Thank you for the opportunity to address you and particularly to address our TV viewers and the people who support the school system in this county. <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about the Kerwin Commission. Back in 2016, the legislature of the state of Maryland established a commission on innovation and excellence in education to see what was needed to update our school system. This is known more commonly as the Kerwin Commission. <coughs> The Thornton program that had been installed some 15 years earlier for a while lifted the public school system in Maryland to be rated the best in the country. We are now below that, maybe rated number 10 or 11. On the international front, from being the most skilled workforce in the world during World War II, uh, we are now considered to be the least skilled when compared to the 26 nations using the OECD grading tool. The legislature appointed a commission of leading educators, government officials, and businessmen and women throughout the state and the country to work in reviewing Maryland's public school system and to make recommendations on what is needed and could be done with our school system to bring it up to world level competency. They have meet, been meeting for a full day monthly for 18 months with many more hours spent in committee meetings. Uh, they have issued a preliminary report uh, that I suspect you folks have uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, and are scheduled to uh, issue a final report uh, recommending uh, uh, final report in December that will recommend how it can be done and how it can be funded uh, you the school board nor even the county commissioners will have much to say about what is done in that program it will be left primarily up to the legislature of the state of Maryland to, set, to decide what to do I hope that you will educate yourself about this program and do everything you can do to in influence your local legislators and other legislatures in the state that something must be done and you want them to use good judgment in deciding what to do. We here in Queen Anne's County are close enough in, uh, to Annapolis where the legislature meets that we can and should attend legislature committee hearings on this important matter and lobby all legislators as well as our own to make improvements in our school system that will make the education our kids get as good as that of other leading countries and yet be affordable to us. At future board meetings, I'd like to bring some of the chief points of the Kerwin Report to the attention of our citizens and encourage you, our local school board, to talk to them <coughs> about the benefits uh, for our, the benefit of our TV audience. Thank you. Thank you. Richard McNeil. Richard McNeil, uh, White Marsh Road in Centerville. Good evening. To begin with, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Kane to the beginning of her s second school term, school yes, year. Thank you. 
And um, after a year of inquiry and conversations and visits to schools, I know that you have done a lot of uh, reflection on what you've seen, I'm sure, and with your leadership team, uh, have come up with a, with a plan. I heard where you were meeting and so forth. So looking forward to whatever educational leadership we'll, we'll have in the, in the next school year. Looking forward to that. For your information, the Queen Anne's County Retired Educators Association uh, made a motion at our March meeting that we change the name and it was approved in June. So it's sort of a little bit more inclusive and the, the new name of it is the Queen Anne's County Retired School Personnel Association. Uh, it's always been open to any member of the, you know, in the Board of Education and, and schools and so forth. But in line with the state, the state changed this name to include um, school personnel, so secretaries, custodians, and anybody else uh, could be part of that. So we, we just to let you know that that'll be our new moniker, if you will. I, I'm still getting used to the QACRPA. QACRSPA. SPA. Yes. So that'll be that'll be forthcoming. On. Um, July the 23rd, 24th, and 25th, we had a group of volunteers uh, to come out to the um, warehouse to help divvy up and divide up the nursing supplies. I'd like to just recognize the folks who were a part of that uh, from our group. Dawn Kentop, who's not retired, but as a wife of one of our principals, uh, she sort of headed that up. Kim Tucker, who's retired, was out there. Mary uh, Vilden and her husband, and then Harriet and myself. And, we had an um, interesting time of uh, taking all the supplies and, and putting them into different school systems or schools for what they were. And um, it would be nice if it was a little cooler, but we got the job done. So, and thanks to Captain Kelly for offering. Uh, we got a message from her that she was uh, just coming back and, and would be out there. Uh, if we get a chance to do that again, maybe not, but we'll invite everybody out there. Have a good time. Um, just this year, I will be working with um, Michael Page and monitoring the um, life skills program again through the University of Colorado at Boulder. Uh, it'll be inclusive all the way up through eighth grade, it's my understanding, and uh, I still think that what I've seen is that it's an excellent program to help our children make good decisions. And, and uh, if you haven't seen that program in action, I encourage you, if you have time in your schedule sometime this year, to see uh, what, what, it, what it presents, because it, it really gets the children engaged, and uh, Christine does a wonderful job of presenting it, and just has a great time with that. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That concludes our community input. So at this time, we'll move on to Dr. Keene um, and the presentations. Absolutely. So we'll have three presentations this evening. We're going to start with our new teacher program and mentor support for new teachers and principals. And that involves uh, Mrs. Walbert, Mrs. Passan, and Mrs. Pauls. Would you please come forward? <coughs> As they get set up, they're going to talk about um, objectives of the program, support that they're offering for teachers and new teachers and principals, and uh, some professional development. Good evening, Dr. Kane, President DiMaggio, board members. We're excited to be here tonight. We have a brief presentation, and with me I have. Good evening, Bridget Passon. I'm the ELA supervisor. And Susan Walberts, supervisor of early learning, um, Title I, Title III, and migrant. And Janet Pauls, program director of teaching and learning. So we've combined the presentation today because we work very well together, very closely together to support <coughs> both of the programs. And our purpose tonight is to just to provide an overview and to um, explain how we provide non-evaluative support to our novice teachers and administrators, 
to tell you a little bit about what that professional development looks like. Um, the biggest portion of the program is that we really serve as critical friends and we really want to increase the rate of success for the teachers, the principals, and of course the students. Going along with that, our objectives, uh, our three objectives for both programs are to enhance the skill set of our novice teachers and novice administrators, uh, in turn increase their job satisfaction and longevity, and with the overall goal being to increase student achievement through various ways, um, teaching and leadership models, our classroom management systems, uh, effective communication with parents and other stakeholders, and the monitoring of school success. So our new teacher induction program, it begins with an orientation um, one week prior to all teachers returning. Our new teachers will report on August 20th. Um, along with uh, activities that will happen here at the board, there is also school-based sessions that the administrators at each building develop um, that are based more um, on the, the needs of the school. Um, there are sessions with supervisors. Each one of the uh, supervisors meets with uh, teachers in their content area. Teacher specialists and academic deans at the school level help hold monthly meetings to support new teachers throughout the year. We have county level meetings that we have throughout the year, um, one set in the fall and one set in the spring for our uh, uh, first year teachers and then um, one for our second year teachers to, to uh, continue to provide that support. And then we have um, mentor support. So there's professional development that's critical to supporting our non-tenure teachers. And in total, over their first three years, they have to obtain six hours of either workshop or course coursework credit. Three of those credits we provide uh, in their second year. Um, we've created a mandatory two credit course. We offer it in the fall and in the spring. It's about eight evenings. Uh, and it focuses on Danielson's framework. Uh, and the components, the four components uh, for effective teaching. Um, and then there's a, uh, that third credit is uh, for their attendance to school and county-based professional development activities. And the other three credits come from any other additional workshop or course they take by the end of, of their third year of teaching where we're getting ready for, for, to award them tenure. So prior to that tenure, um, all students, I mean students, all teachers are required to complete a portfolio. Um, the portfolio is aligned with the intact standards and supports um, and is supported with guidelines for new teacher por portfolio. Uh, they are uh, new teachers have a, a tremendous amount of support from the teacher specialist again and the academic deans at their buildings collecting the things that they need, um, the requirements of the portfolio. They're required to have five lesson plans, um, quite a lot of reflections, making sure that technology standards are embedded and, and making sure that they have a, a plan where the principal has um, observed them. We also, at the spring meeting, we bring in uh, new teachers, or teachers who have completed portfolios and have them share their completed portfolios with our new teachers so that they have an idea what the finished product looks like. Just a question on the professional development and also the portfolio requirement. Those two, are these state requirements or are they a programs developed by Queen Anne's County or what is the? It's a, it's a program developed by Queen Anne's County. It's oh, our. All of this is mm -hmm. the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We've been doing that for a long time, correct? Mm -hmm. It's very successful, my understanding is. Um, actually, the people who have to present their portfolio are very excited to do so. Mm -hmm. And then they love being on the other end of it. I mean, they get, you know, when they turn around and they're the presenter sure. after they've had to be, you know, on the spot and helping the next group. Right. Um, I think this is something that they kind of come from college with, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, a lot of colleges Some. require there's a, there's a base. these um, yeah. right. or help them to learn to develop a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So it, I've been told as new teachers, they're excited to bring something with them they're familiar with. Right. They're utilizing it in a new job and then they get to turn around and watch the next group benefit from them. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think it's a wonderful learning tool for our I've gotten employees. a lot of great feedback about the... I have, too. About I the, to um, the reflection piece of it, too. Yes. We, we receive a lot of great feedback about um, when, when teachers do reflect on their yep. lessons and practices. Yep. So we do assign a mentor to each new teacher of, with zero years of experience. 
And um, we also provide support if they have year two and per principal's request, if they need additional support in year three, we do that as well too. Um, for the administrators, uh, and the, for the teachers, the mentors can work with them in the schools for at least two hours per week. And then for the uh, administrators, I have been visiting them um, on a weekly basis at the school. Um, and then all of our wonderful mentors are retired teachers and or administrators from Queen Anne's County Public School. And Mr. McNeil is one of them. So every year we survey our mentees, our mentors, and our administrators because we want to know if the program is effective. And you can see our return rate has been pretty high, 93% um, for mentees and 93% uh, percent were sick, very felt as though the program was very helpful. And then for the mentors, 92% return rate. And again, 92% of them felt as though the program was very successful. And the same thing with the administrators, 87% return rate and 87% felt that there were positive benefits. So all three parties feel as though it is a very beneficial program for um, our system. And this is just an idea of what the mentor budget looks like. I know often you ask for that. Um, to date, we only have 10 mentors. We had two of them who decided to really retire, um, one moving south for a little bit this year. Um, but we also provide substitutes for mentees to visit other schools, and we always do a book um, study as well. And this year's book study is Teach Like a Champion, and last year we worked a lot with um, equity. So um, we have approximately 39 mentees that we're serving to date. We have about 33 new hires, but um, 21 of them are year two, and two of them will, will continue to be year three and have support. Um, and again, it's, it's a very worthwhile program, so. And this is just some comments, some quotes from our um, survey. So you can read those and see again. Um, they feel as though it's built positive relationships, they've been a great listener, and it's very valuable. So each of the counties have a different type of program, but we've heard a lot of positive feedback from the support that we provide to our new teachers. Questions? I have a question on the, the money one. The, you said that substitutes for mentee visits, substitutes for who? The men, the, the teacher, so that teacher. she's able to leave her classroom to visit another more uh, experienced teacher. Oh, and they just do two days of that for the whole year? Not always. Um, sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's not. It just kind of depends on what is needed for each of them, but it's allocated that much in the budget. We don't always use it. Last year, some of the um, mentees did not get out at all because they didn't need to, and others needed a little bit more visitation, so. And the retirees are all I'll just volunteer to do this for them. They get paid. They get paid. The, me too. the mentors? Yes. They get paid. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. Other questions? Questions? They're paid by the state, though. Not, not through the county, correct? No, they're paid through the county. It's a part of our budget. Oh, okay. I thought that was, uh, we've got money allocated from the state for that. You pay for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The state requires that we have a program, um, but we we pay for that. They don't fund it. Okay. Thank you, team. Thank you very Thank much. You. Wonderful as always. And so our next uh, presentation is uh, our annual transportation report. So uh, <coughs> you're going to hear about a lot of summary data about bus drivers, safety, uh, bus routes, and and all of that. So all ears. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Kame, members of the board. Um, tonight with our 2017-18 transportation report, uh, the purpose of um, transportation, of course, is to provide safe, timely, efficient transportation. Uh, and that contributes to a positive learning environment through the staff and driver's commitment to excellence and continued um, improvement. Our objectives through continuous improvement is year-over-year
comparative trends, safety, looking at driver retention, routing efficiency, and student ridership. Um, we have audits, uh, legislative and MSDE audits, uh, with all the items that are listed here that we have to take care of on a yearly basis uh, with the evaluations, pre and post trips, uh, special needs documentation, annual physicals, annual in-service, pre-service, criminal background checks, MBA records, uh, database updates for um, the drivers and attendants, uh, and looking at our operations being as efficient and as effective as they can be while using software uh, in order to achieve this. Uh, we have to do the verification of the contractor's payments, which is important. Uh, we tried to do, and we have done, 20% ride-along audits. And what this means um, is that we are actually on the route checking to make sure if it's being run the way it's intended to be run and comparing uh, the mileage to, to what has been submitted. Um, it's a lengthy process, but um, something that we need to do. Uh, looking at the bus companies, these are the four bus companies. Uh, there's been no change from the previous year, and these are the number of contractors within each of the bus companies. Uh, looking at the utilization over the years of buses that we have, it can vary at different times. The contractors, as you can see, and we look over a span of years and from 2012 uh, to currently. And uh, again, looking at using air uh, equipment efficiently, the contractors' buses have gone down from 75 buses to 73, you know, over this period of time. The route buses county or uh, special needs buses, but also if we need to put over the years, have had to, uh, occasionally put on a county bus to do a regular run if we needed uh, to do that. The route buses on the county can change depending on the needs for special needs, uh, the locations of special schools, and also homeless students and um, where they're coming to and from. Uh, this is a comparison of the miles traveled. I put the school days on here too because it can look like oh, you're doing really well with less miles, but if you don't really know the full picture of what that school year was like, um, it, it gives you an indicator here. The driver and attendant hours over the years uh, have increased, but you'll see why uh, some of it is programs that have been added, you know, over the years or uh, where we're transporting students to and from. <coughs> the number of students transported um, of, has been going up, as has the number of um, disabled students. Air safety record, as far as the number of um, reportable accidents, injury or damage under COMAR limits, uh, last year it changed to three thousand uh, dollars a limit for a reportable one uh, for um, into MSDE, and uh, so we had three this past uh, year that hit that criteria. Prior to that, it was fifteen hundred dollars, and it doesn't take much damage um, to even hit three thousand. Uh, the bus accidents total. Um, this past year was 13. Uh, what we do is anything that um, whenever a bus might even strike a mirror or a even at some points it's a deer hits a bus. When there's damage to a bus, that's an accident where we look at and to determine whether it's preventable or non-preventable. Uh, we have an accident review committee that's com um, comprised of bus contractors and the police <coughs> and the transportation department that reviews all accidents. And the reason, uh, along with reviewing them, is to see where training needs to, uh, which direction it needs to go in. 
Uh, these are the certified drivers, and I wanted to show you over a period of years uh, where we are. We're right now we have 149 certified drivers in the county. The evaluations uh, this past year we did 53 percent. Under Comar, uh, you're required to do it every uh, do evaluations every two years. We strive to do more than every two years, um, and it depends too on every two years is when a person was put into service when they happened to fall that they would need that. Um, here we have the totals and uh, of the age of bus drivers, and this is you know real important for us to be looking at uh, certainly our training needs uh, for uh, the various um, age groups too and the number of drivers that um, have been driving their years of experience here we can see uh, certainly we have a number of drivers that uh, we're going to be having to replace uh, uh, we have over age 70 drivers we have 26 or 28 I'm sorry 65 to 69 15 so that's a um, s certainly an area of concern you know for us to uh, for recruitment of drivers uh, but you know with this um, uh, you know looking at the years of experience too with 10 or more years 68 years 68 drivers uh, and then when we look up at, at 1 to 1.9 years, just 20. Now, we've been putting more in, but we have a lot that may be going out that we um, need to be, recruitment is so important. Uh, one of our um, dedicated bus drivers, uh, Ronnie Valentine, as you know, was the outstanding bus driver of the year, and it's important you know, to acknowledge her at the special event, but also all of our drivers and their dedication, uh, years of dedication that many of them have had to the school system. County drivers, uh, we have 26 drivers for special needs runs. Uh, we added bus attendants. They're not full-time employees, but they're, um, uh, they certainly have helped us since 2015-16 uh, help with the void when we need to have somebody else on um, the bus with the drivers. Um, we have two drivers on the bus because if one person is sick and then we need to have another one come on, we still need drivers uh, on that bus. So it's worked out well for us. It's also made some people who become attendants um, get on the bus and say, maybe I'd like to be a bus driver. You know, and then they started in the training process. Um, they weren't as afraid once they saw um, what was going on with the buses. We have 393 disabled runs during the school day to and from school. That's midday runs too. And um, below are some of the other programs that the county drivers also run uh, throughout the day and during the summer. Margaret, I have a question. Yes. On the um, substitute bus attendants, is, are they on like a substitute teacher system where you contact them in the morning if you need them? Or yes. Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. it's, okay. We have a very limited number of substitute drivers just because of the driver shortage. Right. And um, as the year goes by, we, Eric's runs may be extended because of the number of the demands for homeless transportation or what, that we try that we have to fulfill or the needs of special education that uh, grow during the year. Uh, as you can see here we have a lot of community-based special needs transportation and these are just some of the examples of places where the buses are taking uh, these students also during uh, the day. Uh, we have pre-employment training of students and uh, again transportation is not a covered expense that comes under these programs but it's something uh, that certainly uh, we provide the pre-employment training um, that's in very important for this, um, these students, yes. 
uh, the, back to the community base, what, explain that to me, what we would send, t drop a child at Safeway? What, how does that? With, uh, well, what they would be doing would be um, um, community-based uh, learning different skills Students at this. Special, mm -hmm. service, special education. Oh, special education. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, thank yeah. you. Oops. Uh, transportation outside of Queen Anne's County for special needs students. These are the schools that we are currently uh, going to every day. And even this past summer, there's really only been about a week in the summer, um, in June, and then maybe two weeks that we'll have uh, right now because they've been going up to this, this point. Homeless students, um, last year, um, this past school year, 16 students, a large majority of them were for a large part of the school year. The previous, there were five. So that's growing, um, or it did this past year. And of course, under McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Act, um, you know, we supply transportation. Um, we try to extend it on some of our contractor runs depending on where the student is, but oftentimes we're using lots of our special needs buses to fulfill that need. Yes. Oh, I had a question on that too. Where do they get, where do you take them? I mean, where do you pick them up? You say they're homeless, they don't have a home. Is there a, I know the Methodist Church does it in the winter, but. Well, there's, Various locations, um, we've gone out of county, Talbot County, you know, to bring them in. We've been in Kent County. We've been... Um, there are shelters in other counties. Yes. Sometimes. They may have them they in a hotel even. that, you know, uh, social services or somebody's paying for also. Oh, okay, but through we, social services. Yes, you we have to tr transport them, them back. Because the, some of the shelters, like... Like Kent on the Methodists, they're only op they're they have to be out of there by six or seven a.m. I mean, that's it's why not. They're in County. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's from shelter. Okay. Thank you. And our county special needs driver training, uh, we always have CPR, first aid, AED training, diastat training, uh, and also uh, safe schools training. They have a, a lot of additional training than our regular uh, in service. Um, in order to be more effective in our operations, we had opt out, and we've had this over the years. Um, as you can see, last year we had more. Now this is a combined total AM and PM, so it might not mean, you know, somebody might opt out in the morning, but still have transportation in the afternoon. But what it has helped us with is looking at our routes and for the drivers to know if somebody isn't going to be there, it, it might not, it may mean they don't have to stop at that particular route and, or every day be looking for that child. And um, it helps them because when someone doesn't ride every day and maybe only a couple times a year, uh, it's easy to possibly go past a stop and not know that someone's there. So this has been helpful and will continue uh, with this. Uh, if someone does opt out and then they want to opt back in, in there's no problem with that. Uh, you know, we can do that easily. It's just that we may need, depending on the route, uh, a day's notice or two. Uh, school bus route reviews. Uh, these are just some of the dates that we had met with uh, the bus contractors, uh, administrators, and uh, parents looking at bus routes for this upcoming school year. Uh, again, we have transportation staff meetings um, to look at where we need to go, initiatives and how they're working. Um, another violations of eight-way traffic flashing lights. Uh, I was, it's really hard to believe we had 39 this year, which is a good thing, but those are the ones that have been reported to us. And uh, compared to the uh, previous year of 111, it's a huge difference. Uh, we ask the drivers to call us on the radio, and then they're supposed to submit a piece of paper uh, with the location. We forward all this information to the state police and the sheriff's office, 
and they would um, schedule people you know, to be on those areas where there had been problems. Margaret Allen, can I interrupt you just sure. for one second? Because I saw a very interesting story um, Sunday night. Oops. I forget what I saw it on. Where bus drivers are buying those things that hold their cell phones and they sit up on the dashboard and their cell phone is directed directly at the automobiles that are coming and they can get the tags, numbers. Have we ever, do we do anything like that? No, we haven't. Um, I, I found don't, that just no, very interesting. It isn't interesting. anything, yes, I, um, I haven't heard of anybody you know, doing that. The, there is yes. school systems mm -hmm. that are actually doing that now. Okay. And they're turning them directly over. I mean, they're, they're actually dropping the children off and going right to the police station and giving those tag numbers. So I just found that interesting the okay. other night when yes, I saw that. Is, that. that is interesting. Yeah. And we have been, um, last year, we were still looking at cameras on buses mm -hmm. um, in order to capture that same thing, too. So um, a citation will be issued to them. Yes. We've currently worked with the company, worked with the sheriff's office. Now legal counsel has that because that changes some different ordinances that go through. But right. It's something, it's pretty scary when you hear the bus radio. I just had one run my. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. Sitting behind a school bus. bus and see those lights and know that we just stopped and there's cars that go past. Yeah. It's. Um, Said, are we still doing that um, pilot program with a couple of buses do have cameras? Not for the, the red. We that's what we're looking to go to. Oh, okay. Um, our legal counsel now has <laughs> yeah. the documents okay. and working. And that's it. the one that'll go directly to the yep. yep. police It'll department to write the ticket. Yep. It's yep. And all the data will be. But see now, clicks. the bus driver has to go to court to testify right. that, that was the individual right. that passed them. With this, it's just a right. monetary fine. Right. So they wouldn't have to go to court for that. They take over all our services basically. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Yes, Every year you may have heard uh, there's a nationwide school bus illegal passing survey and on this one particular day in April uh, and you can see over the years more drivers had participated and in it returning the papers that we give to them for that day and there were eight violations uh, this past year. This year or what, in one day? One, one, I'm sorry, in one day. Yeah, yes. The yes. National, day National day Survey. No yeah. day. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, initiatives that we've had, again, with the red light runner concerns uh, in uh, investigating adding the cameras, it was through American Traffic Solutions that we've been working uh, with the Sheriff's Office um, closely with getting this uh, through. Uh, InfoFinder LE training, we continue. Uh, to look at up-to-date information from the schools. Uh, bus drivers call in the morning to the schools, all the uh, school um, secretaries, administrators, anyone who um, at the school designated on InfoFinder LE would know if there was a substitute bus being used, you know, if there's a substitute driver. So uh, that might be an indicator if something isn't running just on time you know, if they're running behind, that's um, on this information. Also, InfoFinder LE training gives the schools up-to-date information on changes in uh, bus routes and student assignments. This year, the flagger training was completed for school personnel in June. Um, bus cameras, this past year, the switch was removed on all contractor buses, except for those that were under charter. The switch was um, an on-off, and we um, changed that so it would be on, um, the camera would be working all the time. Um, the driver recruitment, that's an ongoing thing. We've had flyers, banners, we attend job fairs. Um, in conclusion, we are going to have to always continue the evaluations for our routes and uh, for efficiency, safety, and economy. We work closely with the police on vehicles passing the red flashing lights on the buses and collaborate with special education and student support departments to meet the students' transportation needs. Recruitment and retention of drivers must be a priority in order us, for us to meet our transportation needs. 
Any questions? I just one more about the, the red flashing light, only like I said, because I saw it happen twice last year and just thought of how it really could have, it really made me furious. Um, is there a specific area um, where we see that happen here in Queen Anne's County more than another place? Do we see it more on Ken Island than we do Churchill? Or do you understand what I'm? Yes. Do we see a place that it's happening more where we could um, target, target where we could target, where we could put like put a police officer on the on the bus where we where we know that it's happening on a more frequent base than someplace else. Yeah, and that's why when we collect that data right. um, from where that's where the police are putting where we've seen more has been on 213 um, yeah, in that Kingstown, you know, going um, right. uh, through that area and um, where um, and also in um, well, just all through that area up in the Millington area, there mm -hmm. seems to be a little bit more. But then as soon as I say it, it's, then it's there's some down else. in Graysonville. You know, right. it's right. it's sporadic. You know, I, it's place. my understanding and I've heard from from the police that 213 is probably the biggest culprit. That's where and, they get the and most And they do complaints. schedule uh, police to be in that area. Right. And I know that they have stopped various people right. and right. on that. So, um, but they can't be every, every place. That's and right. it's, um, but they can target those spots. Right, right. And thank goodness they have that, uh, the grant, which allows right. um, for the, for overtime. Right. for them to be able to do that too and hopefully um, they'll continue to but we'll see how that goes right. too right well thank you very much you're welcome thank you okay. thank you so mr. Farley our next presentation is going to be on employee retention he's gonna make a comment with regard to uh, the employee retention title versus exit um, data so we wanted to give you a thumbnail of the turnover that we've experienced during the 2017-2018 year and um, talk about that being a combination of retirements and resignations. So in total there were 55 uh, that turned over this year. 31 of those were retirements and 24 were resignations. Of the retirements, <coughs> the, the reasons given for retirement was first and foremost, foremost because they became eligible. Um, so they all kind of shared that response. But um, one person was moving uh, I think there were five people who um, who were leaving for family or personal reasons, eight for health, um, or excuse me, seven for health. And these colors are a little mixed up here. And um, eight people declined to answer. And of the resignations, um, we had four people moving five people for family or personal reasons, five people for health, uh, and 10 people declined to answer. Current teacher <laughs> vacancies uh, are posted. These are all that we have left. I know we introduced 30 new teachers um, in the HR report today. And some of these things, these current vacancies are changed due to things that uh, we just learned about where we're going to be uh, uh, posting some anticipated vacancies. The diversity of our, of our applicant pool, over the course of the year, we had 400 applicants uh, for teaching positions. Um, and as you can see, um, it's pretty, pretty diverse, uh, although 45% chose not to respond to the question of their ethnicity, uh, but 5.8% were African American, 5.5% were Hispanic. 
Uh, those are probably the most material portions of our applicant pool diversity. So we'll start uh, giving a longer term year over year um, summary for you annually at about this time. And I would look for your feedback and would appreciate it very much. Any questions? I have one. To, um, how does this like say just the first slide you had on employee turnover? Do we have any information from previous years? Like how does this compare to? Right. So what I'm going to do is do a year over year. Uh, and I, th I think we have to and can do a better job of setting up the exit interviews to better capture that information. And that's what we're working on now. So this is year one then you're saying we don't have any past information on this? Um, it's not electronic in any way uh, and, and it, it wasn't completed very often. So as, as we move forward, we're going to make sure that you get that information. Um, as we started to look at, you know, some structures in our system and, and HR was included, this is an area that uh, needs to be reported annually. And so since it had not been done before, we're building from this point. And the form that we used to ask about resignations didn't include a lot of the information that I think would be useful for the school board. So that's why this is year okay. one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Farley. They're the only ones that have put it in. They usually go with Sunbelt Mellows. I know, I like that. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops. Okay, at this time, uh, we're going to move on. Oh. To break, does anybody want to take a break? Okay. Yep, so we're gonna keep on moving on. Uh, let's see, current action items. Okay, so we need to uh, have a motion to approve the HR report as, pre as presented. Shall move. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. opposed say no, the ayes have it. Transportation report, substitute drivers. Yes, ma'am. We have uh, four um, substitute drivers that have met all the qualifications. Uh, Deborah Clark, Tremaine Hines, Barbara Pritchett, and William Ryans that we're looking to have approved tonight. I move that we approve the substitute bus drivers as presented by Mr. Pender. I second the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, final read for materials of instruction, policy number 620 and regulation 620.1, student attendance policy, <coughs> policy number 503 and regulation 503.1. Was there any comments on the website? No, there were not. Okay. May I have a motion to approve? Oh gosh, I guess I gotta do that again. May have a motion to approve materials of instruction policy number 620 and re regulation 620.1, student attendance policy policy number 503 and regulation 5031. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. May I have a motion to approve Sellersville Middle School 6th grade to go to North Bay November 12th through November 14th, 2018. So moved. I have a question about that. Is this appropriate? Mm -hmm. um, was that reduced in days? Mm -hmm. By how many days? Um, I think two, three, two. Two. Two days, reduced five. by two days, from five so to three. It used to be five and now it's three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're doing it a little earlier than normal, is that? Not for, not for Sellersville. Sellersville. No, not for Sellersville. And and they are, um, and Mr. P will probably correct me on this if I say some, if I misspeak, but yeah. they are looking to start um, raising funds for that. So we're getting in now. Because we were having conversation and discussion among all the middle school principals and Mr. Page with regard to that trip, there was a delay. And so this is, um, Sellersville is going to go as long as it's approved in the fall versus the spring this year. Will the other schools be reduced to two to three days as well? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, okay. so 
it, it used to be in the spring, right? It it was in November. It was in November. So it was in the fall for last Sellersville year. Middle School. Last year, Sellersville, Sellersville and Centerville went okay. at the same time for. And Sellersville Middle School used to November. go in the winter. So right, and they got a in, real raw deal terrible. from that. Yeah, right. yes. well, they yes. they actually did fundraising and they were able to uh, move it Start to, going to the fall. Okay. Move it to the fall. Yes. Okay. I have a question on that too. Um, it one of the objectives is to complete action on service learning project to meet. MSDE annual requirement. What kind of service learning project do they do it? I at can this? explain it because I was there for the week. Okay. Yeah. Um, North Bay yeah, does a variety of um, cleaning up the bay. Um, they pick in all environmental. They're planting, cleaning trash out of the woods. The, um, so it's mostly an environmental service learning. Okay. Thanks. So may I have a motion to approve Sellersville Middle School sixth grade to go to North Bay on November 12th through November 14th, 2018. Don't move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Then we move on to textbook adoption, U.S. history. May I have a motion to approve the U.S. history textbook? Is this um, for up for the first read, Mr. Um, Madam, uh, or, oh, okay. <laughs> Madam President, this is actually for its final read, and you'll oh, see it's, it's actually on here twice, 7.05, and it's also on 8.02. Oh, okay. Depending on how you want to do that is, is for its final approval. We have not received any feedback um, from the public okay. on any concerns of that adoption. Okay. Can I ask a question, though? I mean, sure. it, this is history books, correct? Correct. I mean... When was the last time that we bought history books for this class or? <coughs> I believe the year was 1993. These are And what year does this span? To present day or like to? Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm just Were I'm you just asking about like, the adoption year? I'm or just, no, I'm just, I'm just oh. saying history doesn't As a former that much. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just wondering why we're buying new textbooks for history. That's all. To add 23 that's years of yeah, history. Yeah, that's all. That's, all that's why right I was curious. <laughs> $60,000 is a lot of money yeah. to buy a new history but book. But we need um, the last 20 years captured. <laughs> and, and, and remember, it's also use. Of, so these books sure. have been used no, for over it. 20 I get it. years. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I was... Yeah, and the standards. Remember, the and standards And the standards change. have changed. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. I know our social studies teachers will be greatly appreciative. <laughs> I don't know. I have one that might not. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Okay, so may I have a motion to approve the U.S. history textbook to be used in our high school curriculum? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Future action items 8.01 policies for the first read. May I have a motion to approve the following policies to go for a first read? Education of Students with Disabilities Policy Number 645 and Regulation Number 645.1, Discard County-Owned Books and Materials Policy 614 and Regulation 6141, Accept Acceptable Use of Electronic Net Networks Policy 2.5 and Regulation 2.51, Substance Abuse Policy 527 and Regulation 527.1, and Policy Setting Policy Number 110 and Regulation 1101. I have a question. Why do you have to have a policy to discard books? <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I'm just being honest. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, is anybody else? Cause well, maybe because somebody it, it, would it, take it, it, it instead it's of well, discarding it? it. It is. It is. Inventory it's it's school property okay. and it is inventoried, and so we have to have a proper way to discard those. If Mr. Fister wants to add anything to that, please do. But that's all it, I've ever known. It, it how just, do we discard them? Well, we, we would have the option to sell them to a, another vendor, oh, okay. a that's used what book vendor or something like that. I don't know if we right. had we a have to have some way to dispose I mean, of the yeah. asset. Because it, it used to be a long, <laughs> a exactly, it used to be a long, long time ago <laughs> that people would just dump them in the dumpster oh, and the okay. community would go crazy saying, you're asking for money for textbooks, right. but you got, you okay. know, a gazillion textbooks okay. in the dumpster well, I, and that kind of thing. I was yeah. just curious. That just yeah. kind of history books. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. There you go. That we're lacking the last 25 years <laughs> right, of history. Right, right. 
All right. I'm sorry, but I had to know because that, I, that just kind of struck me when I read that. So, all right. So, um, I've read the motion. <laughs> oh, so moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. I do like, I just want to make one comment. I like the, on the substance abuse policy by the explanation of vaping and Joel oh. in there. Oh, yeah. And I think yeah. that we need to make that, uh, make sure parents are very, very clear uh, when their students start school this year about that policy because many parents don't know what these items even look like. That's right. right. And, and yeah. it could really get them in trouble. Yeah. And have. Mm -hmm. And it has. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So we, we've had some discussion about including it in, you know, the tobacco as well as mm -hmm. the substance use because of, you know, it could be paraphernalia right. for some illegal right. substance. Right. So. Well, and it's a new thing to a lot of these parents. They've mm -hmm. never heard of this. Right. Well, and it, it's very easy it, to camouflage. Very it looks like a flash yeah, drive or it common. looks like well, some of them are very different looking. I was going to say maybe um, in the September or October, uh, meeting we could have some of that paraphernalia here so sure. that it could be yeah, on um, on QAC TV and we let parents know so that they can go because I'll be honest with you I had never seen it until a few months ago some of it the and I was like does a pretty good presentation that would be a good idea I think, for parents for materials who Warren Wright the the oh yeah oh absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, he's given it to the commissioners he's given yeah it well and and Faye, but I just think that that would be a good idea. We give parents um, an idea to say, um, you know, oh, well, I've seen that, mm -hmm. or I'll keep my eye out for it now when they've never done it before, never seen it before. because they don't know. Mm -hmm. And we yep. could run it on QAC TV. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to 8.02 textbook adoption. May I have a motion to approve? Oh, that's one I just did that one. Yeah. That's the one that Jen's not happy about. No, but, I'm or, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I asked a question. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, 8.03, Sharon, I guess this is yours, the citizen um, adver adversary, oh, advisory. Adver advisory cancel discussion. Mm -hmm. Still just, still just um, working on who's going to be reached out to other than all taxpayers. Anybody can be a member of this advisory committee. But I looked into some other counties, and some of them invite all of their principals and maybe like um, 14 teachers. They have some specific numbers. So I'll present that as a rough draft to the, to the board here soon. And if they want to add things to it or take things out, then we'll have it ready to go out to the community as an invitation to join this committee. This is a Citizens Advisory Committee where um, they will work directly with the board and Dr. Kane as needed all the other sister counties in our area have one of these and I think it might help with some of the disconnect between community and board liaison communications what's coming up what's happening um, what somebody doesn't know as opposed to somebody missed it you know just kind of keeping us all on the same page and um, community input you know they 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 are our best input as to what they're looking for in the way of things that we can implement that don't even cost any money you know a lot of things can be done that don't cost money but if the idea doesn't get to us we may not think of it either so just looking for a committee to kind of round out some of the committees that dr kane has already uh developed on her own she's got her um, committees well under hand and working towards developing them all the time so i think this would be an important addition for our county Okay, at this time, um, Ms. Harlow, would you like to remind the um, public of the rules and regulations of... For anybody who wishes to speak again, because I don't know that I need to go through the rules if no one's going to speak again. Mr. Simmons, would you like to speak again tonight? Next week, please. Next week, okay. We won't be well, then I won't read the guidelines again month, and bore, bore you all. Um, but thank you for sitting through our meeting, and um, back to Annette. Um, future meetings and events, um, August 15th, the school board work session has been uh, canceled. I do have a question, and I, it doesn't make any difference to me, but the September 5th meeting is <laughs> two days into the new school year. Um, should we hold the meeting the following week, maybe? I mean, I don't, that's all up to you, to you all. 
because you're all the ones that are. It's a busy week. It's I such think a, in the past. It's we such have, a but busy. It's, I don't care either way. Yeah, yeah last year was in difference. the first week. It, I think because now school starts in September. Yeah, right. That's, why that's it. it. That's right. Right. It. right. Yeah. So so last year was so. Say for example, when I first came, I'm used to giving the back to school uh, readiness for back to school, <laughs> so that you know that we prepared for. But since school fell after, right. Right. we gave an update on what happened exactly. and, and you know how we exactly. got ready. So you know we're prepared to do it okay. on September 5th. That's fine with me. I just you know, okay. I just know that usually when when a hol Monday holiday, we usually make it to the next month. And especially with school starting, we didn't know if you all might just need a break. But that's fine. The fifth is okay with everybody. And I, I think, and I think so. it, we don't want to. Um, interfere with the back to school nights because don't oh, start. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, That's fine. Yeah, we could run into that. Yep. And you're right. Um, on September 11th, the BTE master plan to county commissioners. September 9th is a school board work session. 19th. Possibly. October 3rd, school board meeting canceled. Was the school board canceled on October 3rd? in may we conference moved it, yeah. oh that's right we moved, moved that to the 10th mm -hmm. that's right so the october meeting will be on the 10th there it is it says it right there and then um october 3rd through the 5th is the annual may conference um does anybody else want to talk I, I have something to say um first off i wanted to let the public know that um miss carrie osborne who's running for office in november o'connor pardon o'connor I'm sorry, O'Connor. Um, she's running for office in November. She did miss tonight's meeting uh, through no fault of her own. The date of the meeting changed last minute and she had a major in con uh, scheduling conflict. Otherwise, she's, I wanted the public to understand she's dedicated to a board and her duties on it. It was changed at the last minute. It was not changed at the last minute, but we're not going to argue over okay. that. And on May 2nd, the board approved a resolution formally and publicly censuring me and pushing for my resignation. I appealed the censure to the Maryland State Board of Education. The State Board concluded that the resolution was vague about what I allegedly did to warrant the censure, and there were no facts to support it. As a result, the Maryland State Board of Education rendered an opinion overturning the censure resolution. I want to let the public know I appreciate their patience and understanding concerning this issue, and I look forward to continuing my work dedicated to serving the students of Queen Anne's County. Anything else? Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The, what, what did I just say? All opposed say no. The ayes yeah. have it. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll see you in September. Yeah.